The story opens at Dubai Airport, where Flight Kingdom 29 is about to depart on a seven-hour flight to Heathrow in London. We're then introduced to one of the passengers, Sam Nelson, who arrives with no suitcase and only a small paper bag. The bag contains a tiny gift for his ex-wife, Marsha, with whom he wants to reconcile. Meanwhile, Marsha is in London with her new boyfriend, Daniel, and she texts Sam, asking him not to board the plane. However, Sam says that it is too late, and the flight takes off. Sometime later, a nearby passenger named Hugo tries to strike up a conversation with Sam, but Sam is annoyed by him and urges him not to speak. Moments later, a girl named Naomi enters the restroom and discovers a bullet shell on the floor. She gets very scared and is unsure if she should alert the crew. She then gets back to her seat and tells her friends about it. Overhearing this conversation, an older guy named Terry arrives and asks the girl what's wrong. Naomi shows him the bullet and asks what she should do about it. Terry then says he'll take it and notify the cabin crew. However, instead of taking the bullet to the crew member, Terry shows it to a guy named Stuart, who is sitting in first class nearby Sam. The two discuss how their plan has been disrupted due to the girl's discovery. So they decide that they cannot wait for the trip to reach three hours. Meanwhile, Sam is observing their conversation and is skeptical of their behavior. Following this, Terry comes outside and lies to the girls, telling them that the bullet was from a soldier on an earlier inspection and that they should not be concerned. Although Naomi trusts him, her other two friends are still doubtful. After some time, the girls are still skeptical, so they call a cabin crew member named Arthur and ask him about the bullet, but he appears to have no idea. Just then, Terry notices this and thinks that they must act quickly before the crew does. Therefore, seconds later, Terry, Stewart, and other passengers named Jaden, Lewis, and Jamie pull out guns and begin threatening the passengers and employees. They tell everyone to take a seat and turn in their cell phones. By the time Arthur tries to alert the pilots, Jamie reaches up to him. Meanwhile, the pilot, Captain Robin, notices the hijack and notifies the Dubai Air Traffic Controller of a serious security incident. Just then, a crew member named Colette is forced by Stewart to call Robin and request that he open the cockpit. Stewart confesses that he's aware of their illicit affair and threatens Robin to open the door or he'll kill Colette. Robin then tries to open the cockpit to save Colette's life, but his co-pilot Anna forbids it. Robin gets angry as Anna continues to object, so he repeatedly hits her and unlocks the cockpit door. This gives the hijackers full control over the plane. At gunpoint, Robin informs the Dubai authorities that the security incident was false and everything is safe. But Abdullah, the person he's speaking to, isn't convinced. The hijackers then switch off the Wi-Fi, but Sam, who had hidden his phone, manages to text Marsha to let her know that they're in a very dangerous situation. Meanwhile, at the Dubai airport, a female baggage handler named Neela receives a phone call from her distraught husband. In the background, their daughter can be heard screaming. She hurries back home to see what happened, but discovers that no one is home. Back in London, Marsha talks about Sam's text message with her boyfriend Daniel, who is also a detective officer. Kai, who is Sam and Marsha's son, claims that his father would never lie, and he must be in danger. Daniel goes over the message and inquires about Sam's occupation. Marsha and Kai then reveal that Sam is usually summoned when there's a lot at stake and the organization really wants to resolve its conflicts. With this, he is regarded as one of the top negotiators in the business. Meanwhile, on the plane, Sam gets up from his seat, walks up to Stuart, and makes him an offer. He assures Stuart that if they allow him to return home safely, he will help them in doing whatever they want while making sure that they do not make errors. He goes on to suggest that while most people will be afraid and accept their orders, a few are certain to try to fight them off and cause havoc. Stuart does not respond, but he takes a picture of Sam's passport and tells him to return to his seat. Moments after, Jamie orders Sam to unlock his phone and checks his texts, but she doesn't find his last message in which he notified Marsha about the hijack. A while later, two men on the plane decide to take out the hijackers. Therefore, they proceed to attack and overcome Jaden. His gun goes off as it falls, drawing the attention of the others to the incident. 
for a while, there is panic since they cannot find the lost gun. But Sam eventually finds it and gives it to Stuart to gain his confidence and trust. Back in London, Daniel calls his ex-girlfriend Zara, who works in counter-terrorism, and requests that she investigate if there has been an incident on Sam's plane. She agrees and calls her acquaintance at air traffic control in London, who then contacts the Dubai ATC supervisor. However, Dubai security clarify that the security incident was a false alarm, and the message is sent down to Zara, who informs Daniel. Daniel also contacts Marsha and tells her the good news, and both she and her son are relieved. Meanwhile, on the plane, Sam writes something on the back of a magazine and passes it to Stuart. It mentions that the pilot is a problem. He then persuades Stuart to take Robin out of the cockpit because the system is on autopilot. So, Stuart asks Robin to explain how the system works, and after learning that the plane can fly on its own, he brings Robin back to his seat. Now that the pilot is in first class, Sam moves on to the next stage of his plan. He talks with Robin using an in-flight game, especially the chat setting. In the chat, Robin informs Sam that no contact has yet been made with the ground authorities, and since they're going to enter Iraqi airspace, if Iraqi ATC does not receive a response from the captain, they will launch military jets, with no one knowing what would happen. Sam then looks at the map to see where the plane is and realizes that they are approaching Baghdad. Moments later, a call comes into the cockpit from a Baghdad air traffic officer. Sam informs the hijackers that the captain must contact ATC, since the Iraqi military will shoot down the jet if they do not. The hijackers force Anna to communicate with Baghdad ATC, but they get suspicious and request to speak with the captain. However, Robin refuses to play along so they drag him into the cockpit. He eventually speaks with Iraq, verifying that they are safe. He then lies to protect them from further investigation. As Robin exits the cockpit, he slightly moves a dial, altering the plane's trajectory. Meanwhile in London, a woman named Alice is late for work at a British air traffic control center. She finds out about the security situation on the Dubai plane and is informed that counter-terrorism was involved, but it was a false alarm. However, Alice is quite skeptical of the specifics and quickly consults with her boss. Her boss also rethinks it in his mind and, after double-checking with Dubai, contacts Iraq ATC. They share the flight path in real time, revealing that the plane has modified its course by three degrees. Alice realizes that this is the plane notifying them about a problem and seeking help. At the same time, the operator at Dubai ATC, Abdullah, remains skeptical despite the captain's assurance that they're safe. Later, when his shift is about to end, he overhears his superior conversing with his British counterpart. Abdullah begins to consider the idea that the pilot was pressured into saying that everything is fine on the flight. He then enters the security room and requests that the person in charge show him the CCTV camera footage. He notices that Neela, who is at the baggage security check, suddenly grabbed her bags and fled after receiving a phone call. Abdullah inquires the security officer in charge about why she left so early, and the officer replies that she became suddenly ill. Following this, Abdullah calls Neela, but she does not respond, so he heads to her home. Later, he discovers two British men in their home who claim to be house cleaners. The two men tell him that Neela and her husband are upstairs. Abdullah goes upstairs and calls out, but no one responds. He enters the bathroom and is horrified to discover Neela and her husband shot to death. However, before he can do anything, one of the cleaners shoots him in the head. Meanwhile in London, when Alice discovers that flight KA-29 is not taking the typical route, the air traffic controller center issues a warning, and the other authorities begin investigating. She contacts Zara from the UK's counter-terrorism team to clarify the facts of the strange communication. After this, Zara goes to her office to notify the duty officer. She eventually informs them of the deviation, and Alice explains to the team how she figured out the probable hijack. In the plane, Sam overhears fellow passengers talking about something serious, but he's unable to understand a middle-aged couple speaking Arabic. The Egyptian husband decides to inform Sam of an important matter, but his wife stops him since she does not want to put her husband's life at risk. However, a woman named Leisha translates that talk for Sam and Hugo. 
She says that the Egyptian man claims that the hijackers' guns are fake. When Leisha asks how he knows, the Egyptian man admits he has a 30-year military career specializing in hijackings. Just then, Lewis notices them conversing and threatens them. However, Sam tells him that since the Egyptian man is scared of never seeing his grandkids again, other passengers are trying to calm him down. With this new information, Hugo decides to investigate the problem on his own to confirm that the bullets are fake. Sam advises against it, since it may jeopardize their rescue plan. Still, Hugo says he needs to go to the lavatory by pretending to be ill, where he writes a message on a piece of paper. Before returning to his seat, Hugo tosses the paper ball into the economy class. A woman notices this and takes the note, in which Hugo has asked her to look for bullets on the floor. She ultimately goes down on her knees and searches around for it, but Lewis notices her before she can return to her seat. She says she was looking for her glasses, so Lewis picks them up from the floor and asks her to take a seat. Moments later, the plane arrives in Turkey, where an Istanbul-based officer requests the pilot's approval that everything on the plane is safe. When Robin verifies it, the official asks why the flight's direction has changed, but Robin claims it was a foolish error. Following the call, Robin alters the course again to convince Stewart, but his antics continue to make airport officials suspicious of what is actually going on aboard the flight. In London, the foreign security gives the green light for counterterrorism to initiate a strategy. They begin working on the assumption that the hijacking is taking place. Daniel requests that Zara provide him with the aircraft manifest so that he can run the names against the database to check for criminal records. Zara discovers that there is one criminal on the aircraft, a man named John T. Collins, who has been convicted of terrible crimes in the past and was just released three days ago. However, she finds nothing suspicious about any of the other passengers. Surprised by these findings, Zara sends the manifest to Daniel for further examination. Upon checking it, Daniel finds out that five passengers do not technically exist and cannot be found in any government database. He informs Zara about this, and they understand that they have now identified their five hijackers. In the plane, Stewart turns on Wi-Fi for a while and calls someone on the ground. We then realize they, too, are acting on the orders of certain people who are most likely the masterminds behind the entire sham. We can see that the hijackers are also pretty scared, and this is most likely their first time perpetrating a crime of this size. Meanwhile, passengers on the flight are becoming agitated since they're uncertain whether they will live to see another day. Later, Stewart suspects Robin has been connecting with other people via his gaming chat. He intimidates Robin and begins yelling at him to get an answer. When he smacks Robin in the head, Sam tries to stop him by holding his arms. Stewart becomes enraged when he sees Sam becoming defensive. He starts to feel as if he's losing control of the situation. So he scares Sam and threatens to shoot him if he again tries to play the hero. He then orders that all the screens be turned off. After this, Hugo tells Sam that the fact that Stewart did not shoot anyone during the dispute proves that the guns are fake. Meanwhile, Arthur overhears the conversation and informs them that they haven't found a bullet, but a girl did earlier in their trip. Sam then asks the Egyptian man if he can prove that the bullets are blanks. The Egyptian man then draws images of the real and fake bullets on a piece of paper so that they can tell the difference. Following that, the cabin crew requests that food and beverages be served. Stewart, on the other hand, only allows them to distribute water bottles. While the flight attendants are passing out water, Naomi and her friends are given a drawing of the two probable bullets. The girls then claim that the bullet they saw matches sketch B, proving that the hijackers are using blanks. As soon as Sam gets this confirmation, he decides to confront and eliminate one of the hijackers. He advises Hugo that they must take their chances and eliminate the weakest among them. He considers Terry to be the most vulnerable and requests that Hugo attack him. But Hugo is too scared to even move, and he informs Sam that he can't do it. Meanwhile, in the economy class, a man named Nasir is concerned about the health of his uncle. His uncle requires his insulin, which is stored in a bag inside the cabinet. So Nasir requests permission from hijacker Jaden to get the medicine. But Jaden disagrees and threatens to shoot him. 
Nasir decides to fight back and goes to get his uncle's medicine. However, Jaden beats him up and the two begin fighting, causing havoc on the plane. While this fight is going on, Sam takes advantage of the situation and sneaks to the back of the plane. He walks past panicked people on his way to the back of the plane. Stewart also observes the turmoil and decides to make his own move. He pulls real ammunition from a bag and replaces the blank rounds in his gun with actual rounds. The other hijackers may be using blanks, but Stewart is now armed with a deadly weapon. In the meantime, Sam approaches Terry and attacks him physically, but the fight ends with Terry pointing his gun at him. As Terry continues to threaten him, Sam requests that he shoot. He basically dares Terry to do so, since he's confident that the gun is blank. Just then, Stuart storms to the back of the plane, pulls out a loaded gun, and points it at someone. Suddenly, a gun goes off, and the sound echoes everywhere as this episode comes to an end.